Hey everyone, welcome back. And today what we'll be doing is we're going to take a look and see if my old Zip100 USB drive still works today. I haven't used this thing in almost 20 years since I was in college. And back then, having a way to transfer data back and forth between home and school was, was almost pretty impossible. I mean, nowadays, everybody's got the advantage of carrying a thumb drive with them. Uh, 120 gigabytes of storage, 64 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes, even like 16 or 8 gigabytes back then was like a huge thing. <laughs> but nowadays it's just like all over the place. So what, back then what we had was we had a uh, a zip drive. I, it was either floppy drives or it, it was a 100 megabyte zip drive, which is what I had back then. Um, I think it cost me about a couple hundred bucks for the drive and it came with one disc. And then each disc after that was about 20 bucks, I think, or you could get a pack of like two or three for like 30 or 40 bucks. It was still pretty expensive, but back then it was really worth it, especially with the amount of data that you were able to store back then on these on these drives. So I wanna go ahead and put some information on screen in regards to the specs of this thing that I have. Um, and then I'll get into the unboxing, which is actually just, um, it's just gonna be this uh, power supply accessory box that I had from an old bill from like the uh, mid 2000s. I think it was like 2006 or seven. I can't remember when I actually, or I don't know, could have, this may have been actually from my uh, computer from like 2002, I'm not sure, Ult Ultra S X Connect power supply. Uh, but we're, we're gonna go ahead and take a look. I mean, I just used this box. Let's go ahead and take a look and see, here we go. So again, this has been untouched for almost 20 years in terms of its usage. And actually I have way more discs than I thought I had. So this is the actual standard uh, Zip100 drive that, or uh, actual disc made by iOmega for these drives, but as you can see, and I totally forgot about that, Maxell also made their own. Marks, Marks transfer. Now. I don't know who Mark was back then when I was in college. So this will probably be kind of interesting trying to find out what's inside of it. So we have about Premiere Part 9 and a phone number. I have no idea where that what this is. Um, this was probably from a friend, I'm not sure. Yeah, somebody just, some of these don't even have labels on them. But we have a total of about eight drives here, 100 megabytes a piece. I'm gonna set that aside. We have one more in this actual jewel case, which is pretty nifty. 100 megabytes as well. No labels, nothing. And we have the actual drive itself. Now this has been in my garage for, I mean, I've been at this house for about 10 years, 11 years. And it's been in the garage ever since then. And so far it looks like it's, a, it's pretty clean for the most part, which is pretty amazing. Back then having like this transparent type of case was, or enclosure was pretty nifty. Everything was always, always like a solid color, but, but having the uh, kind of transparent case kind of make it, made it look pretty cool so you can see what's actually inside. You can, you can actually see this stuff kind of like slightly moving around as you use the discs which is pretty awesome. Uh, cool thing about this drive is that you can actually lay it flat horizontal onto your desk. It's got rubber feet on the back of it but at the same time you can actually set it, set it vertically so because it's got feet on the uh, edges like right here which is pretty cool. So we'll take that out. USB cable, um, USB 1.0, so not even USB 3.0, uh, not even, well, not even 2 or 3, uh, super slow, but back then it was pretty awesome. And we have our AC adapter. Alright, so camera is on a better tripod right now, um, that way everything is kind of like stationary laid out a bit farther back from the desk itself. Um, I'll plug the AC, uh, AC adapter for this in just a second. Um, we're going to be using my laptop, my cheap little $140 laptop that I got not too long ago and uh, see what pops up on the display. So let's go plug this thing in and 
we're gonna plug in the AC power, which actually goes in the bottom, which is pretty cool. Oh, it slid up. We got power. All right. Are you guys ready? We'll see if Windows 10 does recognize it. Um, I haven't done any research on this. I don't know if uh, others have been able to get this working. I haven't bothered checking. I've just been thinking about this for like off and on for like the longest time, seeing if this would work. So we're going to find out. So here we go. Well, no response from Windows just yet, but let's go and see if it's in our device manager. Uh, where would it be? Where would it be? USB? I Omega. Yep, got it. So, Windows 10 recognizes it. Awesome. Let's see if it's actually in our... Next fall explorer here. USB drive, so I assume this is what it is, drive D, because this laptop doesn't have a disk drive, or uh, optical drive, I mean. So this should be it. So let's go ahead and see what's on these disks. First one will be the one in the jewel case. I haven't, um, I, again, it's been so long, I don't know what's on these at all. We're gonna find out. All right, <laughs> all right. So this first one, there was no label on it. I mean, there's nothing written on the label, and it says "click here." So I assume that this may have been the one that originally came with the drive, which I just set aside and never used because I bought a pack of like two or three, and pretty much used that throughout the whole time while I was in college. So um, it's an it's an exe file. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we run it. I'm not sure if you're able to hear the drive going. I'm not sure if the microphone is picking it up or not, but it is making a sound like it's spinning and it's reading. Some, well, not. I think it's just spinning at the moment. Then it went quiet again. Like you still hear a hum coming out of it, which is pretty cool. All ways can you use your zip disks? Choose any of these categories to find out how iOmega and our software partners make managing and sharing your data faster and easier than ever. <laughs> That's pretty pretty awesome. All right, so I'm just getting kind of like, you know, a little bit emotional just because I I used to use these all the time back to almost 20 years ago and um, just hearing like that audio, like that, that narrator talking, um, uh, yeah, I mean, this is like very retro. I mean, there's probably a lot of you guys who weren't even born yet when these drives were around. There's probably some of you that were kids. Some of you are probably my age who used these back like in your late teens, early 20s, and you know, even probably older, but yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> kind of cheesy. Back then it was pretty awesome, but <laughs> I guess it's just kind of like a tutorial on how to use um, the zip drive, which is pretty cool. We're just gonna go ahead and quit this. So Omega zip disks, the easiest way to put everything in your life in order. All right, awesome. <laughs> Macromedia, this, and who remembers? Who remembers Macromedia? This is before Adobe took over and bought them out. It used to be Macromedia Flash. Uh, I can't remember, remember the other one. Flash was the most popular one, but the Dreamweaver for web design. I remember that. I used to use that quite a bit. All right, so <laughs> there's nothing on that one, so we're gonna go ahead and eject it. It is pretty loud when it pops out. It's kind of scary. I think nowadays people are probably afraid if they heard something like that coming out of their uh, system. But not bad. All right, one down, eight to go. No label on this one. Let's go ahead and take a look. Also, one thing that I kind of found interesting was whenever you know back then I was when I was handling these discs was that there's like a little window down here in the corner. It kind of, kind of looks like there's like little crystal. I know they're not crystals, but. It kind of looks like that, and I'm not sure what the purpose for this was. I'll probably look it up later online and see if there's 
a reason for this, but I just thought that was kind of cool. I mean, when you look at a floppy disk, I mean, this kind of resembles a floppy disk. Um, overall, it's just thicker and can retain more data, but for the most part, your, your basic design of a floppy disk is on this type of a cartridge or, or thick, you know, floppy huge disk that can hold 100 megabytes or, you know, they have other ones that can hold more, but for this one, just for, I'm just rambling at this point. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, anyways. This this one I can tell you used quite a bit because where um, the logo of this writing is where it says PC100 I Omega, it's kind of rubbed off and you can tell it's one of those things to you where you grab it with your thumb as you pull it, yeah, pull it out or push it in, it starts to wear off and blur out, so pretty cool. There was a problem with this drive, scan the drive down and fix it. Let's try to continue without scanning. I don't want to mess anything up in case there is anything on there. There we go. All right. Um, these are my classes for college, and that's you might. I don't know if you can see it here, but I'll probably zoom in in just a second. Um, but the first one is film and literature, Tootsie versus Doubtfire. So we did uh, do a a film review on Tootsie and Mrs. Doubtfire. I wonder if I can actually open this with WordPad. Ah, uh, no. No, it's just, uh, yeah, kind of works. So that works. Um, pretty cool. This is from July 31st of 2000. That's when I wrote this document. Or saved it at least onto this drive. Hume N. What is this? Uh, June 14th of 2001. This was about the time that I graduated. Was... Actually, no, I graduated in yeah June or May of 2001. So I think this was um, a writing project between me and my, one of my best friends, Andrew. Let's take a look. Can't tell if there's going to be much on here. Um, uh, just beginning sentence. That, the article is titled "The Second Sh uh, The Second Self: Computers and the Human Spirit" by Sherry Turkle. Um, so it's a pretty interesting story. I, I don't remember why this is on here. We were probably discussing something. Um, it's got to be school related because it talks about technology. Low manager and no catering ringtones. Ah, okay. No <laughs> Nokia logo manager and probably a ringtone maker. And back then, Nokias were the biggest thing. I had a Nokia phone myself, and you were able to do some pretty cool things with it. This is before smartphones, and of course, everybody's favorite game was Snake, at least mine was. Um, uh, custom ringtones, MIDI, MIDI tones, um, or MIDI, MIDI, or MIDI, MIDI. And uh, yeah, that was, that's awesome. Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray. All right, so I'm gonna go into this folder I don't know who put this on here, but we're gonna see what's inside of it. So apparently here is an album for Sugar Ray. And one thing that was pretty big back then was sharing music and files across networks and people before it became readily available. Um, I'm not gonna go into specifics, but Hopefully, some a lot of you guys can realize, you know, what I'm talking about. And when I at home back then, uh, before I got DSL speed internet, I was using uh, dial-up, and everything was like super slow. In college, we had a T1 line, and everything was super fast. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> uh, let's see, torn re tournament rep system. Wait, see, so there's a lot of stuff here that I don't recognize. Uh, I'll, visual basic. Uh, uh, programs because um, I went to school for programming a lot of it uh, has gone out for my I mean I don't remember a lot of it just because it's been so long and I, I don't really practice it um, yeah I just kind of feel bad that I haven't retained a lot of that information I'm not really doing any sort of programming myself at the moment um, just basic web design and some CSS even then I, it's been a while uh, tutorial number two visual basic stuff I think 
Yeah, so VB, I, I, would, I would assume it's uh, Visual Basic. At least, it's been so long that I hope that's what it is. Web page. Okay, so I think this is one of my web pages that I first made back then. And this is uh, uh, dated uh, September 13th of 2000. That's going to open up the main page, the index.htm file. Let's see what pops up. All right, so let me show you guys this. Back then, and hopefully the camera is able to catch this, and, and, and I hope it is, but um, I was huge into fan films and um, Star Wars fan films. Back then, The Phantom Menace came out. Uh, Revenge of the, or, uh, Attack of the Clones was after I finished school, but Phantom Menace was like the biggest thing when I was in school and in college. And uh, me and my friend Andrew and a couple of other guys, and, and uh, we had a female in our cast as well. You know, all of us were wanting to do this fan film, uh, Star Wars fan film, and we kind of like wrote up the script and started working on visual effects and outlines, things like that. And so I guess this is the actual website that we were going to be uploading, but nothing really came of it. Um, let's see. That's pretty, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Let me see what the other pages are, because this is like the main page, but you have a news page as well. September 15, 2000, welcome to, well, this says the well, the site is finally up. The official Star Wars uh, contrivance of the Sith website, which we called COTS, C-O-T-S. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this takes me back, and there's a lot of times where, like, I'll think about this fan film and wonder if it would have uh, gone anywhere. But, um, yeah, so I guess that's on here. I'm gonna have to back this up onto my main system and put it somewhere more permanent, I guess, uh, instead of from instead of just having it sit here. So I guess it's a pretty cool idea of me taking this out of the garage and and seeing what's on it. So that is awesome. My webs. So the only thing on this disc is my webs, which is about twelve megabytes in size. Out of a hundred megabytes, that only gives us like a what? like 84 or uh, 87, 88 megabytes left of space to use. So I mean, but back then this was a lot. Uh, desktop icon, decompute. So I remember that I, I was um, contracted to work on a website for a friend of a friend for his uh, web store. And this is basically the um, website itself and his catalog. He, he was selling, I think, just pretty much almost all electronics, like computers, uh, stereos, uh, televisions, just a lot of things. And this was be before like Amazon really grew up and or grew or blew up and became a huge thing in other online stores. Um, there were a lot of online stores back then, but he was wanting to also make one as well. So I guess this is it. So this isn't really, really a big deal. Uh, this is disc number six. Oh, you know, go. Three on one. This this number four. So again, this is a blank disk. There's nothing on it. Let's see what's on this one. Um, there's no index files that we can look at. Uh, let's go into the background folder. Yeah, art files. Some JPEGs. Some 3D Studio Max files uh, for 3D models. Uh, Photoshop files. TIFF files. Let's take a look at and see what's on here. So some of these are from 2004 as well. Some stuff I carry over from the previous redesign. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I remember designing this in 3D Studio Max, which was pretty cool back then, and uh, used it for my uh, business card and my website, things like that. Um, background test, BG test. And this was the website. So uh, this was my, like, this is what the layout of the webpage would have been. This is like the main background menu at the bottom, um, having, giving it that candy bubble look that. Apple made so popular back in the early 2000s with like iMac, iPod, uh, pretty much all the Apple products. I was so, I was so obsessed with like the look of the, the candy, glossy uh, icon look. Why is this shutting down? Oh, Windows, why do you do this to me? Well, I think it's going through an update and we're gonna see how long it does last for. Hopefully not too long. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I wonder if there's going to be a part two to this video since um, a few things went wrong during the production of this video. 
uh, had to swap out batteries. Uh, there were times where I hit record and um, I looked at the camera, the screen, and it shows that it wasn't recording and I wasn't sure why. So I hit record again, had to redo some setup shots. And it was because the card was full and I guess it had some stuff on it from a previous project. I went ahead and swapped out cards. The one that I'm using at this point is clean. There's nothing on it at all. So um, I'm able to record for a longer period of time. But now we're going through a Windows update, which is embarrassing. That's basically it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. At least this came up near the end of this whole thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, in the meantime, I do want to thank you for watching. Take care, have a great day, and if you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. If you have any questions, do so as well. If you like the video, give it a like. If you disliked it, go right ahead. Um, feedback is important to me. Um, I do appreciate it for those who do subscribe and, and watch my videos. It does, it does mean a lot to me. Uh, what else can I say real quick before I pretty much close this video? Uh, let's see. Zip drive works fine. After so many years of being in the garage, through different seasons of hot and cold, you plug it in, works right off the bat. Awesome, thank you iOmega for making such a wonderful product that has gotten me through college because um, I was able to do a lot with this thing. Uh, just transfer so much. The one thing about uh, back then was that music was transferable between different devices using these things as they were MP3 files. Uh, the one thing that I wish we could have transferred over were uh, movie trailers, because back then, I mean, the first time that I saw the Star Wars Episode One film trailer on a computer was while I was at school in our lab, and they had QuickTime, and it was and Quick Apple's website with QuickTime trailers. That was like the huge, uh, the the biggest thing. YouTube wasn't around at all whatsoever. IMDb wasn't around. Oh, well, I don't think it was, but tr movie trailers could only be watched on. Apple's website, the thing, and it was in pretty decent decent resolution back then. Full HD wasn't. A, I don't think 1920 1080s monitors were around to, or weren't too popular. Well, it was mostly, of course, four by three aspect ratio, 10, 24, 7, 68. But I mean, watching that trailer at school was so awesome, and I wish I could have just downloaded it to a zip drive and just go home and watch it over and over and over again. But it wasn't that easy to download. Um, movie trailers from QuickTime's website or Apple's website. There were workarounds, but I, never, I was never really successful doing it myself, but that's about it. Anyways, enough rambling. I do want to thank you guys for watching. Take care. Have a great day.